Oh, you say this cave has a scary bear living in it and you want me to kill it? Well, screw nature. Let's kill that bear for wanting to seek shelter. Let's face it, open world games suck. What, you agree? Oh. Well then good. If you don't though, let me explain exactly why open world games kind of stink right now. These days, developers are obsessed with making their games open world, like it's some sort of pinnacle achievement for game development, when in many cases, it's just the last ditch effort for developers who have run out of ideas. All you need nowadays for your game to succeed is that it's open world apparently. Sure, some games lend themselves to being more open world, like RPG games, certain adventure games, some shooters, but I really don't care about your brand new open world rhythm game. The first problem with open world games is that they are never truly open world. You will inevitably run into some sort of insurmountable barrier, be it an ocean, a river, a mountain, or the undefeatable knee-high fence. Oh no, I guess this is it folks, the end of the world. Can't go any further. Currently open world games are obviously made by a bunch of flat earthers who believe that if you get to the edge of the map, you will simply fall off the face of the world. Until we get an open world game, that is literally a globe. We are living in a flat earth utopia, run by lizard people and the Illuminati. I will continue, but I may have already said too much. Even better, the thing that makes open world games oh so realistic, the return to the mission area immediately screen, just like in real life. The next thing that makes open world games suck so bad is lifeless, empty worlds. Sprawling cities with thousands of buildings, highways, hotels, restaurants populated by 12 NPCs with one voice line each. The developers will create these epic, beautiful worlds, then drop your character in and there you go. Cool. Go. Go have fun. It's your job. Go have fun. It's your job. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. or Miss Game Developer, that, that's your job. You can't just drop me in your world and expect me to write the narrative for you. From the makers of Open World Game come Open World Book. Tired of being constricted by linear narrative that moves you from page to page in yawn, numerical order? Well, try new Open World Book. It has all the features of your favorite best-selling novels, like a cover. Pages, a rectangular shape, but without the annoying restrictions of words. Jump in and make your own adventure. Pen DLC sold separately. Don't worry though, developers will make sure that the game is still padded with 50,000 fetch quests and errands for your character to run. They'll also pack the game with a ton of stupid mini games that serve as nothing more than a distraction. GTA will have Tennis and bowling and yoga mini games. Who cares? For one, they aren't particularly good tennis, bowling, or yoga mini games. Actually, to be fair, I don't play that many yoga mini games, so it might actually be pretty good. It might even be the best yoga game we've ever had. So, yeah, yeah, that's not fair of me to say. I'm sorry. It's GTA though. I want to steal cars, shoot people, and occasionally drive a tank through the center of town not practice my downward dogs. It's like ordering a burger and being given some anemic little patty on a stale bun. But don't worry, it comes with 50 different sauces and condiments. This brings me to the next problem with open world games. All the added extra stuff to do detracts from the main story, especially if there is any kind of urgency needed. You're on some epic adventure as say, Lara Croft, raiding tombs and stopping some evil corporation from stealing a priceless relic. At least you would be if it weren't for the fact that some villagers are now asking you to collect four types of berries to brew a special tea. <laughs> oh, don't worry. Never mind the fate of the world. Never mind the evil corporation finding the relic and using it to summon some sort of ancient evil deity to destroy life as we know it. <laughs> Let's make sure we get through those berries, shall we? <laughs> oh, you say this cave has a scary bear living in it and you want me to kill it? <laughs> well, screw nature. Let's kill that bear for wanting to seek shelter. The fate of the world can wait. 
Open world games also have this overindulgence in needing certain things to feel super realistic for the sake of immersion, but then just only when it suits them. This feels like a pretty hollow reason to make things super user unfriendly. Oh, we have to walk everywhere and we don't have fast travel because that breaks character immersion. Aww. Yeah, yeah okay, okay, cool, but you also have a city populated with like 12 people. You can't move anymore since you're carrying too much stuff. Okay, cool, but if I get rid of this one bird feather, then I walk fine. Not to mention the 14 million gold coins I'm carrying that are apparently weightless. Yeah, we don't let you skip animations because that would break immersion. Yeah, but you make me climb a tall tower to discover areas on the map that I've already been to. On that point, there has to be a better way to reveal new areas of a map than climbing to the top of a tall thing. Ubisoft, I'm talking to you. Sit. Sit. Good dog. You can't choose the it's for player immersion argument when it suits you and then break it whenever it doesn't. Making certain things intentionally slow and unenjoyable for the sake of immersion is dumb. I don't need to sit through the animation of skinning an animal every single time Red Dead Redemption 2. Finally, the problem with open world games is that by creating too many options for players, you actually make the game too easy. It's nearly impossible to balance and curate an epic cinematic experience or problem for the player to overcome when the player has hundreds of options on how to overcome it. So instead of balancing the situation to give the player an immense sense of satisfaction at overcoming the obstacle set before them, instead they cheese it by doing something completely unintended and thereby trivializing the situation. Imagine a similar scenario in a movie, but with open world options. It's Lord of the Rings. It's Frodo, on his way to drop the One Ring in the fires of Mount Doom. But no, we've given him access to fast travel and the giant eagles. So he just flies there, drops off the ring and gets home in time for second breakfast. While we're at it, why don't we just give him a machine gun? Telekinesis. Oh, you can bend time now too. Nuclear submarine? Force powers? Infinity gauntlet? You want options? There, you have them. What? The game's too easy now? What do you people want? I wonder sometimes what would have happened if game studios, I don't know, just trusted their knowledge and experience as both game developers and gamers themselves instead of listening to every complaining gamer that thinks they're an expert. Where was I? Oh yeah, sorry. Open world games suck. And it's your fault. Yes, you. Now the only thing we can do to remedy the situation is to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Now, watch this next video about how we ruin games by making them too easy. And think about what you've done. <laughs>